station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, I am ready for the event. KAKE, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is KAKE. How do you hear me? I've got you loud and clear. Station, this is KAKE. Hi, Nick. Um, will you tell me about what the hardest thing has been about adapting to life in space? There's so many things that are different on orbit. Uh, everything behaves differently. You're just getting used to, to moving around. You know, life on orbit, you know, you can change everything by just uh, changing the way that you float into a, a different module. And so adapting to microgravity is probably the biggest change. It's the one that's most obvious, but that's the biggest change. I don't control everything that's around me. I can't, it's not like on the ground where I can, I can set something down and I can turn my head and I know exactly where that's at. Up here, everything behaves differently and you realize that you're part of the spacecraft. And uh, that's, that's something that takes a little bit of getting used to and it's always a challenge. What was it like for you walking in space? We get to do a lot of amazing things, and doing a spacewalk is one of those. Uh, to be out there uh, in your own spacecraft, you know, we've got a, a safety tether, a, a steel tether that connects us to the station. But other than that, everything that we need to survive is is with us in our in our spacesuit, and and so to be out there, uh, it's just it's miraculous from the perspective that you get. Uh, but one of the most rewarding aspects of it is that you you feel like you're part of this team, even though you're outside and you're working on a task and you, and you're 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 focused on that, and it's you and and you know your wingman out there with you uh, working together to get it done. You feel like you're part of this gigantic team because you've got everybody down on the ground that is helping support the mission. You've got the crew that's still inside the station that helps you get you ready and get you outside all of us working in concert and to to feel part of that well-oiled machine and to be successful and, and to do those challenging things is is one of the most rewarding experiences i've had on the station what are some of the key accomplishments and things that you all have learned during your time at the international space station Yeah, so every day we are doing different experiments and new experiments. And, you know, I'd like to claim credit for being smart enough to make these discoveries. But in reality, the astronaut's job is to be the eyes and the ears and the hands for the scientists on the ground. Scientists that have, that have dedicated decades trying to answer the questions that they're posing to us up here. And so we perform the experiments and we collect all of the data and then we send it back down. And it's helping us, you know, over the long run, we discover that, hey, we're, we're developing new materials. We're learning more about how our bodies behave. We're learning more about diseases and how to counteract those diseases. All of those step-by-step -step accomplishments are done through the experiments that we're doing. So I've been fortunate to be a part of so many different experiments up here. Uh, over the course of my seven months up here, I'll participate in, in upwards of uh, 250 different experiments. Uh, a lot of those are focused on me. And so one of the ones I'm doing this week is fluid shifts. And I'm looking at, we're looking at how fluid changes because of that microgravity, how the distribution of pressure inside your body changes and what those effects are going to be on humans, especially as we start going deeper into space, which is going to be very important as we go back to Mars in the next five years. What does having this experience mean to you as a boy from a small Kansas town? You know, I have to admit, when I was growing up in, you know, rural Kansas, the world seemed so big, and so many things seemed like they were so far out of reach. And I wanted to be part of something bigger than myself. I wanted to be part of that big world. And, and for me, that, the way to get there was I, I, 
went to the Air Force Academy and, and joined the Air Force, and I was serving as part of something larger uh, than myself. And when I was in the Air Force, I realized that, that flight test and, and working with complicated machines and, 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 and helping do new things and reach out there and discover, that was something that drew me to NASA. And so it's been this slow, steady progression uh, that I've con continued to expand my horizons. And, and I look at being here and being part of this mission up here and being part of this global team that makes the International Space Station run. Uh, it's just, it's a feeling of a, a, a lifetime's accomplishments. You know, we've been able to do that. And at the same time, I can see where we're going in the future. And it's really exciting. So if I could say anything to, to all the kids that are in school, uh, schools across Kansas right now is that nothing is out of your reach. Uh, it may be challenging and there may be setbacks, but nothing is out of your reach. You can do it. Thank you so much, Nick. Absolutely. Have a great day. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the KAKE portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from KWCH. Station, this is KWCH. How do you hear me? I've got you loud and clear. Welcome to the International Space Station. right now I got to tell you life aboard the International Space Station is amazing every day it's full of surprises it's full of exciting science that we're, we're accomplishing it's you know we did a spacewalk uh, just recently uh, we've we've had cargo vehicles come and go and and it just every day is is full of new things and uh, couldn't think of a better place to to be working Growing up in Kansas, could you ever imagine you'd be in space doing a live television interview with your home state? Not in a million years. Uh, you know, when I was growing up, the the idea of exploring space was something that I thought about all the time. You, I mean, Kansas is amazing. You can go out in the night sky and you can see the Milky Way and all the stars, and and so it was easy to dream about that as a little kid, but. To, to think about all the things that you've got to do in order to make that happen and how lucky you've got to get. It's, you know, it's, it was uh, beyond my wildest dreams to think that I'd be here today. Um, you know, I'd like to think that it's because of a lot of hard work that I put into it, but I know luck plays a big, a big role in that. And, and more important than that, it's, it's the love and support and help of all the people that have been a part of my life all the way up until today. inspired you as a kid from Kansas to want to go to space? You know, I think it was, you know, growing up in, in rural Kansas, it, you know, you seemed a isolated. And so I had this urge to be part of something bigger than myself, uh, to, be, to be part of something that, you know, was a way to give back to others. And so I got excited about serving my country, went to the Air Force Academy and, and you know, joined the Air Force. And, and through my service in the Air Force, I realized that you know, it is really about being part of a team. And uh, I can tell you that the, the Air Force is an amazing team and uh, there's no better team than the team I'm on right now at NASA and the things that we're doing. You know, the, the people that are working in the United States, the, the people with, that are working across the globe, our international partners, what we're able to accomplish here on the, the space station uh, for the betterment of humanity is, is without parallel. What kind of experience and work is happening on the ISS right now? 
But I think it's safe to say uh, if you can think it, uh, think about it or name it, then we're, we're doing it up here. Uh, during the course of seven months, we'll do more than 250 different experiments up here, collecting data so that the scientists on the ground can draw their conclusions and answer, answer the questions that they don't have the answers to. Uh, that ranges everything from new materials. Uh, you know, just this past week, I was working on an experiment where we were testing out uh, uh, the way rubbers are made and, and maybe that we can make better rubbers that are going to make our cars more fuel efficient. The tires last longer and end up reducing emissions and help our planet. You go all the way from that to, you know, in a couple days, I'm going to be doing experiments on my own body trying to see how microgravity changes fluid distribution inside my body where the, you know, the heart wants to push all the pressure up to my head when I'm up here because it doesn't have to fight gravity. And that changes things in our body and we're trying to understand what that what the implications are because you know we're going back to the moon the you know the Artemis program we're going to be there in, you know in five years and then and stay there and figure out how to get to Mars and do that safely and all of that is going to be predicated on understanding how face space affects the human body. So we spanned the entire spectrum up here. We're going to wrap up real quick. This one's a fun one for you. Nick, Star Trek or Star Wars, and why? So I have to admit I'm a huge sci-fi fan, so it, this may offend some, but I'm a fan of both. I, I think that uh, anything that sparks the imagination and gets us thinking about space uh, is, is, is amazing. Uh, another one that I'd throw in there is Doctor Who. All right, Nick, thanks for joining us. Safe travels, and thanks for making Kansas proud. Thank you. It was my pleasure to speak with you today. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the KWCH portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from KSN. Get the most out of your mattress with Haverty's Labor Day Mattress Sale. Our experts will help you choose from a wide selection of top brands and we'll match any price. Save up to $700 on Tempur-Pedic adjustable mattress sets. And save up to $200 on Sealy Hybrid mattresses. Haverty's. Life looks good. Get social with the KFN team. Here for you on air and online. Hi, I'm Carly Willis with KSN News 3, inviting you to join me as I access the edge with Project Access. Here's your chance to repel Hotel in downtown Wichita on August 30th. Station, stand by um, one second for KSN. Um, they're dealing with technical difficulties. And station copies. Hello, this is KSN. How do you hear me? So I have actually been involved. Uh, yes, this is the International Space Station. I've got you loud and clear. Hi, this is Stephanie. I hope you can hear me. You did a spacewalk last week, and that had to be amazing. What are some of the most memorable experiences you've had so far aboard the space station? Yeah, Stephanie, there's been so many. It's tough to pick a pick the uh, the top. Uh, obviously, a spacewalk is a tremendous experience, and it's a unique perspective to be out there. Uh, in your own spacecraft uh, with such a, a, a panoramic view uh, unobstructed by any of the, the station uh, structure itself. And uh, it's, it's something that I'll never forget. 
Uh, there's been so many different things that we've done up here that have been special. Some of them are some of the involved science that we do where it's very hands-on and you're, you're working uh, with uh, scientists on the ground, stepping you through procedures. Uh, you know, I never thought I would sequence DNA or modify DNA, uh, but we're doing that up here as part of investigations. Uh, there's so many different things. Uh, the science is one of those. Uh, another special aspect of it, and I, I don't think we can talk uh, highly enough about this part of it, is, is the international aspect of being up here. You know, I've got uh, two Russian cosmonauts uh, and, uh, and an Italian astronaut from the European Space Agency that are part of this crew, and we've got a team spread across the globe and being able to, to engage with each of those countries in this partnership has been one of the most rewarding things that I've experienced. You've said before you're proud to be from Kansas and from a small town. What was it that helped prepare you for your career and your life growing up here? You know, I think that... Uh, you know, some people would look at growing up in a small town and think about the things that you don't have. And I, I have to say, this is, this is coming in hindsight. So when I was growing up in a small town, I looked at all the things that I didn't have or that didn't have access to. But looking back in retrospect, I realized that because it was a small town, we had so many opportunities, you know, and going through school, you had the opportunity because it was a small school to participate in every sport and every club and to just get that breadth of experience. And I think ultimately that that breadth of experience is what has allowed me to, to be successful. It helped me be, adapt and, and to, to meet different challenges as they came across in my career. And, and more importantly, it, it took me outside of my comfort zone in so many different ways. And so that's something that I've done throughout my career. So growing up in that small town, I think, really gave me the foundation to, to go out into the larger world and succeed. It, without a doubt, gave me the drive and the desire to go out and be part of something bigger than myself. You're on your second expedition now. How much longer will you stay in space? When will you get to come home? Yes, yeah, so I am uh, came up here uh, as part of Expedition 59. We're in Expedition 60 now. I've been on orbit for 166 days. Uh, my mission is 203 days, so I'm going to land just uh, just after the beginning of October, October 3rd. So I've got one more month to soak up and make as many memories up here as I can. What about the future? Do you know what your next mission will be or what you hope it will be? You know, the, the future is really bright right now at NASA, and uh, it's, it's exciting to see the developments with the Artemis program and our goal to get back to the moon in five years and do it sustainably and to learn from that and push on to Mars. And so uh, I have no clue what my future holds. Uh, I just know that I want to play my part, whatever that may be, in helping us get back to the moon and helping us push further into the solar system. Uh, if you're interested in space and you want to become part of it, there's no better time to get involved with, with our nation's space program than right now. And what would you say to Kansas kids interested in a career like yours? You know, the, the advice that I give to kids, um, whether they're from Kansas, um, obviously I've got a connection uh, with Kansas, but wherever they're at, is that we're defined, you know, in life we're going to be defined by how we respond to the challenges that are, that are thrown at us, not by the challenges themselves. And so you've got to, you've got to, a, you got to tackle every one of them, and it helps you to find out a little bit about who you are uh, yourself. If you look at my career, there are failures in the career. There are things that I, I didn't get or I tried to do and I wasn't successful, but you don't let that stop you. You figure out how to be successful and, and still pursue that dream and, and let that passion continue to fuel your, your commitment to making it happen. And so, you know, whether it's taking 10 years and in, in, in three tries to get selected to be an astronaut, 
or whether it's actually having to survive a launch abort in oct you know a year ago uh, in order to finally make it to the space station. Uh, there were challenges and the road wasn't easy, but you don't let that get you down. So always stay committed and uh, just face your challenges head on. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants from KAKE, KWCH, and KSN. Station, we're now resuming operational audio communications. Thank <laughs> you.